Good day everyone, welcome to On the Bench at Sport Fishing on the Fly. Today I'm gonna to be tying for you my zucchini soft tackle. This soft tackle is a fly that I've used only in still waters in BC here and um, it's based on the zucchini coronamid, which was done by the BC Fly Guys uh, a few years ago. There's a video for it on YouTube as well as Sport Fishing on the Fly here, uh, Brian Chan's tied one. Um, yeah, it's a great little uh, soft tackle. I mostly use in the evening or the morning when the dries are coming off. So make sure you have these materials ready before you tie the fly. For a hook, I'm using a size 12 like scud hook by Maruto. Uh, any uh, 12 or 14 is the normal size that I tie this on. Any curved hook will do. For thread, I'm using black 18 knot nano silk by Semperfly. For the butt, I'm using Micro Metal by Semperfly in Blood Red. However, you can use um, fine red tying wire, which is what the coronament is done with. And I also used to tie with the tying wire. For the body, I'm using Hollow Tinsel in Black Medium by Uni. It's the one with the green tinge. For the thorax, I'm using K-Pop Dubbing in Black by Semperfly. And I've mixed it with a peacock diamond dub. I only used to use like a, an ice dub or a diamond dub for the thorax of this fly and I've changed it and I'll tell you why when I tie the fly. And for the hackle I'm using partridge and I'm using the more whitish feathers on the skin. I've tried the brown feathers and they don't work out quite as well as the white feathers. Um, I haven't had as much success with them so I'm going to go ahead and place my hook in the vise. And I'm gonna take a little bit of my cobbler's wax here and just wax my nano silk. It's a GSP, so it's a slippery thread. I prefer to wax it. And I'm just gonna give it a little spin and flatten it out a bit too. Start it on my hook. Snip that off. And now I'm just gonna take a piece of my micro metal here Tie that in, and I'm just going to bring this down the hook, um, trying to keep my thread as flat as possible. It's pretty slim already. So I used to fish this fly on an intermediate, like a clear line, and then last year I got a hover line, so I started fishing more of my um, soft tackles on that line. But I've had success with both lines, for sure. And um, generally I use like a, like a slow hand twist with a couple of twitches here and there. And that's how I fish that fly, a couple of pauses. Um, it doesn't have any rhyme or reason this fly, but it does work. Like up until last year, I had caught my biggest trout on this fly, some of my biggest trout on this fly. Last year I used my olive and caught a bigger one, but not by much. <laughs> so I'm just going to tie that black hollow tinsel in all the way down to the micro metal. my thread back up the thorax I'm just gonna wind this hang on tuck my thread over here I'm just gonna wind this up the hook Trying not to snag it on the hook here. I'm trying to overlap it a little bit if I can. The body doesn't have to be perfect. It's hidden by the hackle and the thorax and stuff too, so. Let's move that out of my way. 
And then just tie that off. Tie it off really well. Snip that off. And then I actually used to use um, hollow tinsel uh, in red on the butt of this fly. But then, you know, one time I went fishing without it, I didn't have it, and it didn't really make much of a difference. So what I do with the wire, or as I'm doing with this micro metal, is I just take about four wraps at the back and just give it like a tiny red butt. I don't think it makes much of a difference. I don't think the original zucchini had a red butt on it. So, and then I'm just going to counterwind my rib up the hook here. Trying to keep the fly as durable as possible. I have had it chewed up pretty good in the past. One time I was up in 100 Mile fishing for giant rainbow trout. And this seemed to be all they were taking. And of course I only had one with me and then it got chewed up and then I was really sad. So I don't want that to happen. It's never any fun. Right. And now I'm just going to take a little bit of resin. I'm using the Semperfly No Tack resin. Just cover that a tiny bit, not much. But like I said, you want to keep it as durable as you can. Just going to coat that a tiny bit. Especially the size 14. I mean, I've had some pretty big fish on that fly. So for the thorax, like I said, I used to use ice stub here. And um, this year I'm experimenting with this new Kapok dubbing by Semperfly. And I've just added a little bit of the Peacock Diamond dub in with it. And um, it's it's a like a dry fly dubbing that they've tested out used to be used in life jackets and it just floats for days apparently and the reason I'm putting it in my thorax is I want it to sit up a little higher in the surface film and I don't particularly like losing using floatant in my soft tackles although I have done it I just think it gets in the legs and stuff so I try not to so yeah it's just a little thorax it's not big and then for the hackle I've gone ahead and prepared a partridge hackle. Um, I've taken the tip and isolated it. I'm just going to chop it into a little triangle so that I have a little anchor to hang on to. Find my wax here. I'm just going to give my thread a little bit of wax here. Just helps hold the uh, stem in a little bit better. These feathers are very delicate, these partridge feathers, if you've worked with them. You'll know what I'm talking about. Um, they are not my favorite to use for any kind of fly, <laughs> but they have the nice speckling that, that I really like too. So, you know, I use them, but um, I have been experimenting with other types of feathers on this fly. I have a Brahma hen by Whiting that's, it's like a mottled gray color. And I use that, sorry, I'm just trying to sweep these hackles back just trying to get them to lay back, but I'm trying to be very gentle too. I've had this feather break on me more than any other feather that I work with. So I'm a little bit gun shy of it sometimes. And I usually give it, hang on, I just got, I give it about one and a half wraps here. Like I said, I've tried the, um, got my thread trapped there. I've tried the brown feathers and I never had any much luck with that fly. I don't know if it was coincidence or whatever, but I did try it a few times. I've had the most luck with the white feathers on this fly. I'm just going to snip that stem out of there. Take my hackle and just sweep it back here. And build a tiny black head. a little piece of the stem. Sometimes that happens when you're tying these soft hackles. You can just bend it down with your nail. Get 
can be a little bit fiddly. Just check to make sure my hackle's all the way around. Looks good. And now just whip finish. So yeah, give that a try. That's the zucchini. Like I said, uh, I've had the most luck with my clear intermediate and my clear hover line with this fly. Uh, mainly in the morning or in the evening, mostly. I've noticed, you know, when dries are coming off is usually when I fish soft hackles. If they're not obviously coming and taking them right off the surface. So, works pretty good. That little resin. Hopefully I didn't get any in the in the eye. If you do, you can take a feather and clean it out, or you can just take another hook, poke it through. Let's make sure. Cure it. And that's it, the zucchini soft tackle. Thank you for joining me on this edition of On the Bench. Take care and tight lines, everyone. I'll see you next time.